Hi, Julie. We are live now, and uh, everybody, I'm with Julie Ortiz. Say hello to everybody, Julie. Hi, everybody. And um, anyway, Julie's had some uh, memories and experiences that I found very intriguing when talking to her during preliminary uh, checkup on this. Um, and uh, your, your experiences, your, your, your feelings and memories begin at the age of 13, right? Yes, that's correct. What it, now tell me, what is it that you remember at that age? Well, um, I do remember being petrified at night. I would keep my whole family up all night long just screaming because I knew there was something outside my window. And I would always have kind of an image of an alien in my mind. And um, prior to that, I'd never had an interest in sci-fi anything. Interesting. You know something? I'm going to share something with you, and you're going to find this interesting. My niece, this runs in my family too, but my niece had the same thing happen to her, something outside of her window. And my sister at the time just really treated her like she was insane over it. And my niece told me they weren't human. And yes, yes. And it's, just, it's such a feeling of like you know it's there. Like you know 100% is there, and you know you're not crazy, but... Nobody else believes you, and, you know, being so young at the age of 13, it's like um, everyone looking at you like you're just nuts, and you you know you're not because you know you feel these things, you know you see, you know, see these things in your mind's eye, but you have no physical evidence. It's so frustrating, isn't it? It's so frustrating. Exactly. You, want, you want to be able to discuss with this people, and I know I went through the same thing because I'm an experienced or abductee myself. And when I tried to turn to her to family, you get no support. And no, as a matter of fact, uh, they don't understand. My own father told me neither to talk about it. He said, "Just shut up. Don't you ever discuss this." And I'm sure you experienced the same thing from your family, the same type of uh, pretty much. And um, did, now, did this go on all the time from the age of 13, or was this just one event? Yeah. No, it was like every night for years, for years, probably until I was about 15 or 16. As a matter of fact, it's, it's like now is the time in my life that I'm able to sleep without a light on. I've always had to have a light on since then. Um, and it's made me a pretty jumpy person. Um, I Prior to that, I was a very calm child. I was a very easygoing child. And after this, it's just, I feel like in a way it's kind of ruined my life, whatever has happened, because, you know, um, you know, being abducted, I know I was abducted. I absolutely know it. I just don't have the evidence in my mind. I, I only have the physical evidence. There's never enough evidence to prove it to anybody, and that don't ever feel bad, because I want you to know this is going to go out there, this is going to be on the air, and this is important, this is part of disclosure, and I have your permission to do this, right? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay, now don't ever feel bad because there's never enough proof to satisfy anybody. You're never going to have enough proof. Um, and nobody's ever going to be completely satisfied. We are just now, we're just now approaching an age where people are starting, starting to open up and listen to some of these experiences and realize, hey, something might be going on here. And that's right. what's going on. And that's where we're at right now with you and I and other people. We're talking here on this uh, Alien Talk uh, discussion and getting disclosure after because the more people that hear this, the more they realize this is real and these people have gone through hell. And that's what's gone on. You've gone through hell. I went through hell. Yeah. Other people I know have gone through hell. And um, basically, so when you, okay, this has been going on. You've been tormented. You've not had any support from any family. And basically, right. as, as you turn into an adult, there's something else that, uh, to me, is, I'm not a female, but it would be the most traumatic experience that a person could actually face what you faced. And I'd like you to share with the people what you shared with me that, that happened to you uh, uh, by, by this experience. Yeah, because it, it, it's very gripping to me. It, it, really, it really hits home with some people. People think, think that just seeing an alien is terrifying enough. But what you went through with the uh, pregnancy, I, I just incredible. Can yeah. you share that? It was, well, you know, I mean, in 2005, I was actually pregnant. I, I knew I could feel my body. I was pregnant. I took a pregnancy test. I was pregnant. And then I had made my appointment with the GYN, you know, got, got all excited. And then a couple of weeks later, I just, I started spotting and I was just not pregnant anymore. Um, I'm not sure what happened. I have no idea. Um, I do. They took, they, they took the baby. They did. They had to they have. I mean, baby. that's the only thing. And the funny thing is, you know, you have a hormone in your body when you're pregnant. And the pregnancy test 
you know, I got afraid for hormones. But when I wasn't pregnant anymore, I took a pregnancy test and it said I was not pregnant anymore. So, and it was one of those tests that either say pregnant or not pregnant. And, you know, your body doesn't just make up those hormones. Like, that's that's a really hard thing to fake. Very common, Um, them taking the baby after pregnancy, just so you know. Very common. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I've come to terms with it. I mean, you know, there's there's nothing I can do about it other than just kind of cope. Is this one, um, is this one time experience if this happened to you, the pregnancy? Yeah, that was the one time with the pregnancy. But prior to that, I had a procedure done in my female area and they found a lot of scar tissue on my uterus. And I had not had any babies um, prior to that. So nobody could, my doctors were kind of baffled that they found all the scar tissue. Interesting. So, Let me tell you yeah, something. I, I want to tell you something just so you, this is interesting. I'm not going to mention anybody's name here, but I have one gal, one young lady who uh, has had this happen so frequently that she had to have a hysterectomy to stop it from happening. Um, it, it just was one time after the other after the other. So you were very fortunate that it happened once. I know once is traumatic enough. But she's had this happen so many times that she actually had to have a hysterectomy and she just she's terrified of it all. You, this is that's a terrible thing that you've gone through. And um, the other thing I wanted to ask you, you remember, you know, during our, our first talk, you, you'd mentioned uh, something about remember being having memories of uh, being inside of a, of a room uh, in a craft. And explain yeah. that. Explain that. What, what do you remember from that? I remember it was um, more like a hospital setting. What was the col- um, what was the coloring of the room inside? What was- it was very white. It was very sterile. The lights were very bright. Um, and I remember, like everyone, there were other people upon. The, it must have been the craft. Now this this was kind of like a dream, but I mean, I really do feel like it was an abduction experience. It was. And uh, yeah, and and I remember. Well, first I remember seeing an alien face. And it kind of looked like one of the gray aliens, just a typical gray alien, but he had a little more wrinkles to his skin. Mm-hmm. Um, but then all of a sudden, he, they turned into doctors and nurses in, in my mind. Interesting. Um, so, but I do remember there being like a lot of medical equipment, and I remember actually looking for my husband because my husband was there as well. So I remember looking for my husband, but the doctors and nurses wouldn't have let me see my husband. Now, the lighting. I, I, there's something I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question because it's something I'm curious about, and I want to tell you first of all when I had my experiences I remember the same settings a white room and aliens around me and I had to, I had grays and I had a tall humanoid and I had two little wow. blue, two little blue beings that were holding a baby they actually presented a baby to me when I was when I was taken but what what I'm getting at what I'm getting at here is the setting with the lighting the reason I asked about that lighting because something I found intriguing in the room it was very brightly well lit. But I don't recall ever seeing any fixtures of lights where light lighting was coming from. In other words, it was like I, the light was. Yeah, filled. now that I think about it, I, I don't remember where the light was coming from. Yeah. It was kind of just it, it kind of was just Fills the a room. bright glowing light. Yep, and it so, just well, the way it was lit. Of yes. Course. And that's what I want to find out, because I, I, as I asked you before, you never mentioned fixtures, and that's what I was getting at. And I was tra- and you haven't mentioned fixtures. And when it came down to me and my experiences, there were no fixtures. It just filled the room. They have a very weird yeah. way of lighting the room, and that's showing such an advanced life form that they're capable of doing this. We couldn't do that. We can't just fill up the room with light, but they are. Right. You're, that was, I want you to know, I believe that was an abduction experience because that's how it happens, and that's usually how it lingers afterwards. And what you explained, something else you explained that we share in common, you tell me your feelings that afterwards you said to me about after it was all over with the next day. Yeah. I was so tired, like I felt like I didn't sleep. I remember having to take a nap the next day because I was so exhausted. Um, And I felt like um, my body was in pain, like I was just very, very sore. Um, And right now I currently have a pain disorder. I have fibromyalgia, but I wake up some mornings like I didn't sleep. The same thing like when I had that dream, that experience. Um, I wake up, I feel like I haven't slept, I'm very sore, yep. I'm in a lot of pain and weird areas in my body, especially my feet. And um, that's how it happens. That's how it happens. Yeah. Time. Exhausted. Feel like you've been hit by a freight train, just totally wiped up. <laughs> yeah, Seriously. absolutely. 
Now, now the other thing uh, I was really curious about, the beings. Now, tell me a little bit more about what the beings looked like that you saw. And I, I, like I said, I saw grays. The, the grays I saw were like four and a half to five feet, if, the, if that, uh, tall. And uh, there, was, there was one at my foot, two at my head. And then there was one humanoid, which is about probably about eight feet tall, very thin, but very well built. Um, and then there was the blue beans, which were very short, probably about two feet tall. And they were, one, of the, one of them was holding a baby. And um, what I'm curious about, when you saw these beings, first thing I want to ask, when they were in the craft, were they wearing any clothing? Um, I'm trying to think. They were wearing doctor's, um, like, uh, lab coats. Yes. They were wearing okay. lab coats. Okay. And that was just, and I don't know if that was part of my dream because, or if they changed my memory somehow because all of a sudden I saw them and then all of a sudden they were doctors and nurses. Okay, now what I want you to do very carefully and very relaxed, try to relax during this, I know it's tough, but think about what they actually looked like and describe what you saw because this is real, this is epic, this is what people want to hear, what these beings actually look like. And you've had an experience and I want, to, I want you to try to describe them to the best of your ability what they actually look like. Now, well, the one being, the one that I saw the most clearly in that um, dream slash abduction, um, he was short, um, probably about four feet tall, maybe a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. And he had, um, and I, I just knew it was male. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know how I knew he was male because I couldn't see anything other than the lab coat. Mm -hmm. But his eyes, I remember being so big. I remember looking at him and being so big. And his skin was like leather. It was sort of like leather, like wrinkly kind of. And his, he had a very like sharp chin, uh, sharp looking chin, sort of like a triangle face. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it was different than like I, I did uh, mention to you before, I did read what Willie Strieber's book, Communion. And the cover of the book, there is a picture of an alien. It's very, right, his absolutely. skin is very smooth. But his skin was very leathery and wrinkly. Right. That's now, how I can describe it. Now, the grays that I saw, tell me if there's any chance that they was like this, because I'm trying to see if there's, simula if there's similarities here. The grays that I saw, their skin, what, they, what it looked like to me is dolphin skin. I don't know, it looked like the underbelly of a dolphin and shiny like that, too. It was just very, it was leathery, but shiny, and it was like a, almost like, a, like it reflected. Was it anything like that or not? It, it was, actually. It was. Um, very, very shiny, um, very shiny. It was like, like fresh leather. I couldn't describe it like a purse of one. But wrinkly, on the other hand, his, his skin had wrinkles on it. I wasn't sure. I don't know if that meant he was older or, um, I'm not really sure, but the, that being definitely had wrinkles for sure. Now, is that all that you saw were the gray beings or were there any other beings in that, uh, setting with you other than the grays? No, that was all I saw, and I remember it was just like I said, it was a quick flash, and then all of a sudden they turned into um, doctors and nurses, so they looked human after that. Mm. And that's what I remember. I'm not saying that that's actually what happened, but... That is all I really remember. Yeah, I want to ask you another question. Um, you have a profile picture here. We've, we've kind of hooked up here on Facebook and started talking. Uh, you have a profile picture on Facebook. Is that okay if I use that as a cover on this interview so people can see what sure. you look like? And, and it, so I have permission. There's two people in that picture. But do I have, is that one of your child? That's one of your child or your daughter? Yeah. Okay, so I have your, I have your permission to use that then, right? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, um, I think we spoke earlier. My daughter's been drawing pictures of That's what I want to touch base with. That, that's why I brought that up. It's because your daughter. Now, this stuff, stuff runs in families. And it, it, it runs in my family. I have two brothers who were also taken with me. I personally suffer. Let me ask you before we get to your daughter. I suffer from Morgellons disease. Do you suffer from any lingering exposures like Morgellons disease or anything like that, that you, that's been sticking with you? For, for years after this or not? No, not really. Just, I mean, I have fibromyalgia and I was diagnosed with go. it. Um, I've always had weird aches and pains, especially burning on my feet. That's always something that I've had since I was 13 years old. That's um, weird. That's when mine started too, I, 13, 10, 13 years 13? old. Yeah, mine started at 10. My Morgellons started at 10. 
My first experience, oh. my first memory is that four and a half years old, the beings came to me and uh, in our atrium. We had an atrium in our house where we, where the roof was open and we used to sleep out there. When they came to me, they told me they were my parents. And I said, you can't be my parents. My parents are in the house. I didn't realize that they are our parents, that we are them and they are us. And they've been doing genetic engineering on us since, well, ancient hominids. And that's what they meant by that. But uh, very interesting. Now that this runs in our family too. Now, what I want to know is your daughter. You said that she's drawing pictures now of uh, beings. Yes. What are they? Yes, and she can describe them very well. Um, she'll say, "Oh, this one." She actually had one that actually had antennas. I was like, "I've never seen a being, or even read about a being with like little antennas." I wasn't sure if that was sort of a mixture of cartoons and you know what she actually saw, but. She wakes up very tired. She's afraid to sleep in her own bed. Um, she's been sleeping in my bed. I've been letting her just because if this is happening, I want her to know I'm going to support her. Let's let's um, take that word if out because I believe we need to in disclosures confirm and we are confirming this is happening this is what's that this is not just happening to you it's not just happening to me it's happening to a lot of people i've been discussing this with because of what i do i discuss this with so many people and this is happening to a lot of people you're going to hear a lot of them coming to the forefront they're all kind of getting courage to do what you're doing here and this is what's going to happen uh and so it's not if it's definitely happening you're not losing your mind you're not nuts <laughs> They want, basically, the people on this planet, most of the officials want you to think that you're losing your mind because they have no rational explanation as to what's going on. They don't know because these beings aren't selecting what they think would be the primary targets for them to be selecting. They think they should be selecting government officials, doctors, and important people on this planet. And these beings aren't necessarily interested in these doctors, these, these politicians. They're interested in the people, the everyday people, people like you, people like me, and that's who's being targeted. And so we are the witness te testimony, and it's so important what we're doing here, seriously. I want you to know that. It's just an important that's thing. interesting. Yes. I, I mean, I believe it 100%. I really do. But I do say, I guess I'm so used to saying if because I don't want people to think I'm crazy. Don't, don't worry about what they think, first of all. I want to tell you something. Here's the, when you want to say if, think about this. In our universal expanse, there are billions upon billions of different solar systems, okay? And within right. those solar systems, we are one of the smaller ones, not the smallest, but one of the smaller ones, with those billions upon billions of different solar systems within the universal expanse. expanse. Tell me, would not a person be considered stark raving mad lunatic to think that we are the only life within there? Right. You're absolutely right. So when you think about it, you tell these people that, that are trying to make you feel like you're crazy, really, you're not crazy. They are the ones that aren't thinking straight. They aren't thinking rationally about the uh, significance of what we're around and how massive this entire expanse is. And for to be calling people crazy because they're having experience with otherworldly beings is not crazy. They're the ones crazy for thinking it crazy. So don't ever think right. that you're crazy. These people want it to go away. They're afraid of what they don't know. They fear it. That's what that's what's going on. They don't have a clue right. what's going on. And the ones calling you crazy are the ones who aren't having the experiences. So according to them, it is crazy. They, this isn't reality because they don't know what that reality is. So no, don't ever think you're crazy. Okay. Okay, I won't. I won't. But um, it's just, you know, it's just such a, I mean, uh, an intense experience um, to be an abductee and not really remember everything. And I would one day like to do hypnosis to see what actually happened. I want to tell you and I want to tell other members that are listening. Here's how you can do it. Everybody says regression. And here's how I did my, my regression. I did self-regression. And it's the best way you can possibly do it other than having somebody else do it. But not everybody has that ability to get somebody to do regression for them. Um, the best thing you can do is if you have a recording device, even a, even a phone with a sound recorder, anything that has a recorder that will record for any duration of time, you go into a dark room and you lay on your back in your bed, whatever, and put a recording device next to the pillow or on a nightstand and let your mind drift. Let your mind drift back to the experience and start thinking about it. As you think about it, start vocalizing everything and anything that comes out and let the recorder pick it up and record it. And you know, after you're done, after you do this long enough, Keep going until you're ready to fall asleep, seriously. And when you're, when you're done, when you listen to that recording, 
you'll be amazed by what you've learned. And then you can do that several times, and then from that recording, you start drawing other conclusions, and this is how the memories come back. They surface in a relaxed state. So you've gotta be in a very relaxed state, and when you're trying to force a memory to happen, it doesn't always happen. It happens best when you're relaxed. So remember that. Do it in a dark right. way. So that is, okay. and, and that you may find you're gonna remember so much more and so many other things. Um, I'm running out of time right now because I try to keep these interviews to a short length and maybe you can do some regression and we can do another interview down the road, see what else you get out of this. And, sure, but I sure, sure, that sounds great. I sure thank you so much for being on and I've really enjoyed hearing your experience and you just hang in there because you're not crazy and you're not nuts. Okay, <laughs> thank Julie? you. All right, you have a great thank day. Thank you so huh? much. All right, bye-bye.